today in World of Warcraft. So, the number one thing to mention for this week is that the twisting corridors are going to open. Now, let's just sum up the twisting corridors into the most important thing that people care about, about this whole thing, is that you can now get your mount to work in the mo. So, the mo already had a mount available, besides the corridor creeper, if you didn't get your own mount from the hunt in the beast warrants. You can now guarantee your mount from the last layer, the last boss of the last layer of the twisting corridors. Now, let's just immediately point out that this is account bound, okay? There is no alts being left behind without a mount because they didn't keep up with the daily and weekly things you have to do in the mo. Okay. However, however, there still is no catch up. So you needed to have completed the storyline to be able to open the twisting corridors. You had your pre chain quest, which was the one that introduces you to the mo and Torgas, the one that starts as you're leveling even, and then into the first parts of your covenant hall system where you start your soulbind system and then your first renown and all of that. Once you get the quest to search for Bane in the Mo, you start the actual storyline from Torgas, the one that Bolvar has given you every week for the past like five weeks, six weeks. That is the storyline you need to be caught up on. You need to be this week in Torment Chamber Trial if you want to have access to the Twisting Corridors next week or I guess in NA like now. The quest for this week is the Signs of the Lion, which is the pre-quest for Anduin. You know, after you went in there to pick up Jaina and pick up Thrall, there is a pre-quest for the Anduin part. And once you complete that, you will get access to the Twisting Corridors. Now, it's worth mentioning, interestingly, that even in the beta, there are no more available quests. Next week, you get the last part of this Torghast chain quest given to you by Bolvar, which is the Captive King. What is also interesting is that next week you will also be getting the last chapter of your Covenant, chapter 9. You were, up to today, at chapter 7. This week you're getting chapter 8, and next week you will be getting at chapter 9. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens next week, where we will be essentially over with the quests in Torghast and the quests in the Covenant campaign. There was nothing in the beta, nothing has been added, so we, we know nothing so far after this. Now back to the Twisting Corridors, provided you have kept up the quest chain and you're up to par. When you complete layer number two, you will get a pet, the Death Seeker. Here it is. You will be, of course, alerted when you go into the layers of Twisting Corridors about the rewards into each layers, like this. And then once you go into layer four, you will get a toy, the Helm of the Dominated. This is uh, exactly as it reads. You will basically turn into one of the many of the model you have seen around the mall, which is the Mossworn. You know, the armored guy to go in line with your mount you will be getting soon, hopefully, from the Twisting Corridors. Layer 6 is where you get your title, the Spire Stalker. And then finally, layer 8 is where you will be getting the Corridor Creeper. No, no, not this Corridor Creeper, this Corridor Creeper. So, the main thing to point out is that this is going to be a little bit of a longer slog than the previously completed Torghast layers, right? Because every one of the layers in the Twisting Corridors is going to have 18 floors. And also, because this is a completely different type of Torghast wing, you won't be getting a free access to layer 8, like you have gotten in the other wings. Here you have to start, of course, from layer 1. So that's gonna be 144 floors you have to go through if you want to get the mount. Now, this was a big slog in the beta. In the beta, we were talking about something like 13 to 15 hours to complete all of this. But remember that, number one, back then, the tests were being done at around 195-ish item level. Now, you will be able to be much higher. And also, there is the fact that, as you know, Blizzard has severely nerfed Torghast. Now, we do know they nerfed things like scaling, things like HP of mobs. However, these numbers only went up to floor number eight because that's how deep the layers went so far in Torgas. In here, instead, we will see the layers go all the way up to 18. So it will be interesting to see just how hard the scaling is going to be compared to the amount of powers you will be getting. Because yeah, I mean, you will be getting a lot of powers, you know, like a lot. <laughs> so I don't think it's going to be that difficult, just very time consuming compared to your normal Torgast run. But if you really want to get that mount, for the more, it's something you have to do. Other things happening in the week. 
you will be going from Renown 18 and you will be able to get your usual three Renown per week, two from the weeklies and one from the campaign quest, so 19, 20 and 21. Renown 19 is going to give you 2% stamina, the deepening bond which happens every now and again as you increase your Renown, and then the Renown 20 is what's gonna increase the item level of your world quests and your emissaries and caches and whatnot. From open world content it's gonna be 184 item level, so it is reaching now Mythic 0 level. And then lastly, at Renown 21 is where one of each Covenant soul binds is going to get the third conduit. So Pelagos is going to get its conduit, potency conduit. So now Kyrian is going to have access to two potency conduits if they want to. You have Marilet for Necrolord, which is also going to offer you a potency conduit. So Necrolord 2 is going to have access to double potency conduit. And then, unfortunately for Ventir, Nadia is giving you a endurance conduit. So you are still stuck with only one potency conduit. And you will have to be, actually, for two more weeks before you can get your second potency conduit as Ventir. Now, the only the only one of, the only hipster that's trying to do things differently is going to be Nightfay. Because, of course, this was, you know, pointed out months ago, actually, that Dreamweaver would have gotten its second potency conduit weeks before anyone else. In fact, Dreamweaver got that second potency conduit on Renown 13. So that was like over two weeks ago by now. And this week, Dreamweaver is going to be the only soulbind to unlock all of the conduits. Due to the fact that, as you can see, the last two rows of Dreamweaver are passives. So all the active conduits you can choose are squished in the middle, which is why Dreamweaver gets them so early. If you are, for example, an Acrolord wanting to use Emeni, you will have to wait a month before you will have access to your fourth conduit. But that's just how it goes. I think that's how Blazer decided things should go. Not sure many people agree with this. Now, another point of this week is going to be Mythic Plus. I want to make this point because, as you know, I will go over the Mythic Plus week, the affixes and how it has gone, which are the easy dungeons and whatnot, but it deserves a spoiler before we start because this week is going to be Fortified, Sanguine, Quaking and Prideful. So here is the list of affixes we have had so far, and so far they have been completely correct. This was the existing rotation in the beta, and then on live we started essentially as a continuation from what was going on in the beta. So this last week, or this week if you are in you, tyrannical, inspiring and necrotic were the affixes. So the next week, or now, if you are in an A, it's going to be Fortify, Sanguine and Quaking. I'm mentioning this as a spoiler because the next Mythic Plus video coming in like Saturday or Sunday, it's gonna be too late to mention this. What is worth mentioning is that this is a very nice push week for everyone. It is laughably easy to push keys this week. So as you know, I am a follower of the belief that Tyrannical is very bad for pugs compared to organized groups. By default, pugs are always going to have an easier time pushing fortified weeks. It, it's, not, it's not good, but it does punish mistakes much less than a Tyrannical week. So this is by default easier for you if you're pugging. Number two, Sanguine and Quaking are jokes, you know. They are essentially affixes where you can pretty much completely ignore, where you can literally take zero damage from those two together. Quaking was changed by the end of 2019, where instead of doing 20% of your max health and anyone else that was inside your circle, they changed it to deal 40% of maximum health, but no longer to yourself. Meaning, if you do actually spread, Quaking is going to do absolutely nothing, besides the fact that you have to prevent getting interrupted by it. Same goes for Sanguine. As long as you're kiting the pack, as long as you're moving them around, it is going to do absolutely nothing. The fact that it's not tyrannical means bosses can fall down extremely quickly. We have, it's worth repeating, pretty much the first seasonal affix which is essentially helping you complete the key. Top men and scientists might even debate whether or not completing a plus 9 is easier or harder than completing a plus 10, simply because a plus 10 gives you a massive buff. So this is going to be a very easy week. It's not a week that is also going to punish either melee or ranged. I guess Sanguine is, you know, slightly more annoying for melee, but still very, very lax compared to what you have gone through in these past weeks from spiteful to storming. So you should be happy about this week. So this was the disclaimer of the week. If you were planning on doing Mythic Plus, then this is the right week. If you were planning on finding a good week to push high keys, particularly anyone who has been complaining about not being able to find groups or not being able to push keys, particularly in pugs because people are dumb and they deplete my key, etc, etc. This is an easy week to abuse 
the easy affixes. So go along and spam some Mythic Plus. And these were the two most important things to mention for this upcoming week in Shadowlands. Yes, I am aware of the Stygia exploit that is being used and abused in the MO. I will not mention it in detail because then you're going to get banned and you're going to blame me. It is the classic case of people finding a way to super spawn a certain enemy and then farm it with impunity, which is of course something that Blizzard doesn't want in the MO, hence why they put the Eye of the Jailer mechanic in the first place. I do believe you should stay away from this exploit, particularly because this is something that can give you player power. You can get sockets from Stygia and you can get 226 conduits from Stygia from buying the items from Venari, so it doesn't look like something Blizzard is going to be very lenient. So you have been warned, okay? You have been warned. So this was pretty much everything worth mentioning. I will see you guys tomorrow. With what? I don't know. Nobody knows. See you guys soon. And in the meantime, don't, don't, why are you looking on Google for the exploit? Just, just, just stay away.